Okay, so uh, in chapter 8, um, on page uh, 198 to 199, there's a section called Today's Families. Uh, families in the United States have changed dramatically during the past 60 years. Uh, we look, live, and act a lot differently than we did. Uh, today, few uh, mothers remain at home until their children finish high school. Um, most families, it takes two to actually um, make a household run, two, two incomes, um, and we, we get adjusted to that lifestyle before the children come, then the children come, and there we are. Um, so there's very few mothers. My mother was a stay-at-home mom on and off through um, my whole growing up, uh, growing up years. Um, I was fortunate to get to stay home with my three um, and raise, raise them, so um, that's not the norm in today's society. Families today include mothers working while fathers stay at home with the children. Uh, so we have Mr. Moms, uh, single parent families, families with two working parents, remarried parents, childless marriages, uh, families and adopted children, gay and lesbian parents, extended families, grandparents raising grandchildren, and unmarried couples and children. So as you can see, it's a very unique array of, of home circumstances now. Parents are generally older than in the past, in part because they marry later. I want to think I read some research the other day that said the average um, age of a woman getting married is now 27 and maybe the first child is at 32. There was something around that area. Um, used to be uh, couples married early and immediately nine months or 20 minutes later, as the old saying goes, um, a child would be born. So um, we are now waiting, uh, ladies, uh, to we, uh, get uh, our education and our career started and then we're ready to think about somebody else, I guess, other than ourselves. Um, uh, we must learn to value and respect the diversity of the families in our schools as we work with parents and other caregivers to help students learn. Um, so you, you know, don't go in and assume that your, uh, your raising is like everybody else is doing because that may not necessarily be so. Um, I, I remember ha having a parent-teacher conference with a, a mother and there were two gentlemen with her, a set of triplets that we had and that I had in class and, and um, um, the, both, both gentlemen were there and I didn't realize until the meeting started both of them are fathers to the children. Um, they, she was telling me they'd been on the Jerry Springer show and, and it was well known and had not heard of them and, and I, you can imagine um, um, my distress I guess because I was not prepared for, for that to be the answer. I didn't even think that was medically pro possible, that's true enough. If you do the research, um, it can happen. Very rare, but it can happen. So I guess I want you to be prepared for whatever situation. So here's here was an activity I always started, um, especially the last three years that I taught, um, just so I would kind of be familiar and those surprises maybe not happen so often. Um, I actually had the students draw a picture of everybody that was in their house, that lived in their house, and label who it was. That way you know if grandma's there, that way you know if, Aunt Barbara's there, you know if there's a, um, a boyfriend or a stepdad, kind of gives you a good indication of, um, of who all's in the house. So you're not surprised when, when everybody comes in or when no one comes in. Um, children from all types of families are academically successful in school and become well-adjusted adults. So I don't want you to think, oh, this child's never going to make it because they have um, the mother, it's only the mother and she has a boyfriend, yada, yada, yada. Um, we have to look at the individual student. As a teacher, you should monitor your interactions with students and their families to avoid labeling a child as dysfunctional because he or she lives in a family structure different from your own. Um, I think that's a, a big problem. We assume that everybody uh, has the same lifestyle as we live and, and that's not true in today's time so you're going to have to to watch your interactions and with the parents and the communication with the parents and communication with the child to make sure that there's no difference remember once again i go back to that same statement as we've used before um, it's not mine to judge who's in the classroom in my eyes everybody sitting in there is going to have an equal a chance at a good education so i'm going to make sure that happens too often teachers develop a self-fulfilling prophecy about students in non-traditional families not being able to achieve academically. Instead, we should have high expectations for the academic success of all students and do everything possible to help them meet our expectations. Uh, don't let them 
have um, use excuses. Um, I know I've, I've had some students who would say, "Well, I couldn't do my homework because I was at dad's instead of mom's," and and uh, dad's girlfriend. They'll have all kinds of excuses if they think that's going to help them. So don't give them that opportunity. Uh, stay stay strong and keep those expectation highs for all students. The expectation should be high for all students. That's worth repeating.